This picture of my great-grandma, far left, makes it look like the cameraman just stumbled into a secret meeting with grandma. I enjoying the Christmas sweaters. Hey, whoa, hey, whoa, what are you doing? <laughs> How'd you get into grandma's basement? Yeah, get back upstairs. Grandma's gonna bust a cap in your butt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we stand wholesome grandmas, I swear. <laughs> What's up, my bearders and weirdos? One topic here. And today we're diving back into r slash witches versus the patriarchy. It's a really fun woman-centered subreddit that focuses on smashing the patriarchy and also just like gently poking fun at some of the aspects of being a witch. We've covered this subreddit before. A lot of you have asked me to come back to it in the comments, so I'm more than happy to. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Asked my doctor why she practices with her maiden name and not her married name. Her response. Because my husband didn't go to med school. <laughs> Damn, sis. <laughs> Absolutely. Own your own accomplishments. I love that. <laughs> this is very. Okay, but instead of a microphone, a stethoscope. <laughs> Can we fetch you anything else tonight, mistress? Another blood offering, perhaps? Uh, nay! Be gone, thralls! Leave me to my evil and adult, adult fun time affairs! Huh. 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 <laughs> I love Minecraft. <laughs> As a kid, I thought sleepovers were wild because we played video games for 10 hours. Then I heard about girl sleepovers and they're wild. Man, they gossip and eat 40 pounds of food and take blood oaths and host fight night and sacrifice the weakest member to the goddess of the moon. Like what the fuck? <laughs> oh honey, whatever happened to your friend Bethany you had over the other night? <laughs> well, you know, mom, she was the weakest link. Oh. That's what happened to Bethany. <laughs> God dang it. <laughs> oh, poor Bethany. <laughs> Sometimes when I catch my reflection in the mirror, I become acutely aware of the skeleton chilling inside me at all times. Who are you? It is I, you. You who? What? <laughs> and so I do a little dance to make sure my skeleton is having a good time. <laughs> yeah. Did you know that teeth are not bones? But teeth are skeleton. <laughs> A haunted house, but the ghosts recite poems you wrote when you were 16. Oh, no! <laughs> Uh, one downvote! One, one solitary downvote from me on this one. <laughs> mm, I don't know if all of you remember what you were writing when you were 16, but I was reading a lot of Poe back then, so there's a chance. It would just be too spooky. I wouldn't like that. <laughs> You're so vain. You probably think this curse I'm casting at 3am covered in blood and tears is about you, don't you? <laughs> uh, I like that. <laughs> Women in STEM. Sorcery, thaumaturgy, enchantment, and magic. Oh, that's what that stands for. <laughs> Not long before Rowling was published, women authors were unheard of. Now, your generation gets to take us further than my generation ever could because we aren't living your lives. But at least acknowledge that we laid the groundwork for you to take us on the next step. <gasps> <sighs> <laughs> I can't believe Jane Austen wrote Pride and Prejudice in the 2000s. And in 2015, Emily Bronte released literary classic Wuthering Heights. <laughs> Thank God someone paved the way for them. <laughs> if you think JK was the first woman author, you don't actually care about women authors. Mary Shelley didn't have adult fun time on her parents' grave for this level of disrespect. Yeah, Mary Shelley. Hang on a second, actually. Wait, hang on. She did what now? <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. All right. If you haven't read Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, I would absolutely recommend it. It is a fantastic book. It's super weird. And if you've seen any of the movies or maybe read the play, I don't think it fully captures everything that really went on in this. It's a... It's a trip. <laughs> I'm rereading it again right now, actually. <laughs> Murasaki Shikibu didn't invent the novel for this. Christine de Pizan did not sit down at her desk and write the book of the city of ladies, advocating for women's education and finding the value in women of all social classes and backgrounds in 1405 for this. This isn't even true in the 20th century fantasy or children's books. What? Pierce, Lackey, Applegate, McCaffrey, Bradley, Butler. Whoops? <laughs> Applegate, yeah, 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 Christine Applegate. She wrote the animal. Hang on a second, I'm pretty sure they're older than Harry Potter, too. 
Yeah, the first release date of an Animorphs book was in 1996, and the first Harry Potter book came out in 1997. <laughs> Get wrecked. <laughs> a casual reminder that a woman was the first known author and poet in 2300 BC. The first novel in recorded history was written by a woman in 1010 AD. The earliest example of science fiction was written by a woman in 1666. Horror science fiction was popularized by a teenage girl in 1818. A Scotswoman expanded children's stories from moralizing tales into the anarchic adventures of the mid-1800s well before it became popular in the 20th century. The masked costume hero archetype that inspired Batman and Zorro was created by a woman in 1905. And while she is problematic as all get out, we all know who is to blame for popularizing boarding school fiction, which is a huge inspiration for she who must not be named from the 1930s onwards. Do I even need to mention what a bad Pioneer Ursula Le Guin was for women author in fantasy sci-fi genre. Not to mention Agatha Christie is literally second only to Shakespeare in terms of work sold. Four billion compared to JKR's poultry 500 million. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> Mary Shelley did what? Mary Shelley lost her virginity on her parents' grave. She also kept her dead husband's heart wrapped in silk after he died. Oh yeah, I knew that one. <laughs> That's good. That seemed kind of on brand. <laughs> Dare I repeat, Mary Shelley did what? Mary Shelley walked so bone-stealing Tumblr witches could run. <laughs> I loved reading this. What a trip. <laughs> I hope all of us have found at least a couple new authors we can investigate. There's a number of ones that even I haven't read on that list. <laughs> Taking my husband's last name doesn't mean I'm not a feminist. It means I don't want anyone I went to high school with to be able to find me ever again. <laughs> It's wild to me how many people are on Facebook and they're like, yes, I'd like to be accessible by all the people I went to school with at all times. <laughs> I don't want to be a girl boss. I want to be a girl hobbit and live in a hobbit hole and have two leisurely breakfasts every day and a garden full of potatoes. Oh, the dream. <laughs> what about second breakfast? My body may be a temple, but I am the god to whom it is devoted. Do not presume to tell me how I may decorate my altar. This is quite possibly the best way I've heard to say, I dress how I want, deal with it. There needs to be more things like this. Also tattoos, also piercings, yes! I have met a very large number of older people that have been covered in tattoos. And you know what sets them apart from their peers? They're interesting. <laughs> find me a gang of grannies without tattoos and find me a gang of grannies with tattoos. <laughs> I know which ones I wouldn't want to mess with. That's, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Also, speaking of Jakob Brzezalski, this painting of his is my favorite. Like, yes, girl, snitch on the night, get his butt. Wait, what? Oh, no. <laughs> Why? <laughs> the one of a girl looking longingly at a naked witch flying by, and the one of a babushka yelling at a devil also rule, though. Woo! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Get off my house! Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Heard a report that some ravens were perched above a downtown building, purposefully and gleefully pushing snow onto the heads of people passing by. Happy New Year to the ravens, to the tricksters, and survivors. Which is to say, to all of us finding glimmers of joy in the darkness. I'm a pretty big fan of hitting people who are unsuspecting with snow. <laughs> Pope Francis! Don't choose pets over children as birth rates drop. <gasps> Me! Look what I got. <laughs> the Pope. Ah! <laughs> I actually tweeted about this when I saw this happening. Low key, if CEO Pope wants us to have kids so down bad, he finna yeet some of that on fleek lit church money, then full flex I'm a slay on God. Now that's bussin' bussin', no cap. If he's gonna share around some of that church money to make sure that we can actually afford to have kids, then yeah, all right, fair enough. <laughs> but if not, then maybe furry companions are an acceptable alternative. You know, not everyone wants babies. <laughs> Being gender non-conforming is great because straight people think I'm edgy and intimidating, but LGBT people see me and immediately think I'm friend-shaped. Aw, no gender. Comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. I like that. <laughs> the Tooth Fairy is fey propaganda. It teaches your kids that it's okay to invite the fey into your home and to sell them parts of your body. Oh, okay. <laughs> I feel like this post woke me up to something evil. Yeah, no kidding, huh? Huh. Warning. <laughs> Teeth warning. Have you all seen this show yet? 
pretty spooky. Did you know? Alice Lee Roosevelt Longworth, daughter of Theodore Roosevelt, was known for smoking in public, swearing at officials, riding in cars with men, late night partying, and owning a pet snake in an era where women were expected to conform. When an offended dignitary asked the president if he could control his daughter, he replied, I can do one of two things. I can be president of the United States, or I can control Alice. I cannot possibly do both. Reminder, you are under no obligation to look pretty. Not when you are laying around the house. Not when you go out to the grocery store. Not when you sit in a classroom. Not when you go to the gym. You are never obligated to get dressed up just so you are pretty for others. Pretty is not the rent you pay to exist in the world as a woman. That last line. Wow. I needed this this morning. I watched a Hallmark movie backwards. A woman in an ugly Christmas sweater dumped her loser small town boy, <laughs> small town boyfriend, <laughs> small town boyfriend to pursue a law career in New York City, where she lived happily ever after in pencil skirts and amazing shoes. <laughs> oh, that's far superior. <laughs> Be the reason why the lights flicker when you enter a room. Glass headstones. Dang. Imagine a graveyard full of these on a sunny day. It would be so beautiful. I would position mine so that every day the sun was in the right position, it would set fire to the roof of someone I hated. <laughs> Thus achieving revenge from beyond the grave every single day. There are two kinds of people. <laughs> Hear me out. What if instead of kissing someone at midnight on New Year's Eve, we all just collectively scream? Ah! This is relatable! This is very cathartic! <laughs> Reasons to hit the gym that aren't patriarchal beauty standards. Number one, outrun the cops. Number two, outlive your enemies. Number three, more stamina for a dull fun time. Number four, actually sleep at night. Number five, get strong to fight races. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> I'd like to add another if I can. Be adept enough to have sword fights with one another. Women are told it's unfeminine and gross to have muscles and to cultivate strength, which in turn leads them to actively avoid doing things that will build muscles and strength, which then makes them even less capable of doing things that require strength, which the critics then use as proof of women's inherent physical frailty. And so the cycle continues. Citation. Women's difficulty with pull-ups is about more than biology. Fit and feminist. File under. Reasons to get swole is far. B or B getting huge. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Asked my mom to send me some pics of my childhood dollhouse, and it turns out she is some sort of horror cinematographer. Oh my god. Oh my god. What's in the shadow? Oh, up the stairs. What will we find? Ah! What did your mom put in the bathtub? <laughs> oh, oh gosh. What is in the bathtub? All right, yeah, that's that is extra spooky. I don't I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> Last year, I cleaned my house and saged everything and started running. That didn't work. So this year, I am trashing my kitchen and making donuts in my pajamas because f everything. That remind Hang on, that reminds me of something else. I'm burning sage and my boyfriend is talking about it's irritating his skin. Yeah, I bet it is, demon. <laughs> <laughs> Same energy? Same energy. <laughs> I was watching a show for about 10 minutes and this lady was listing all of these great things to do for fun. <laughs> then I realized that it's one of those religious channels and she was reading a list of sins. <laughs> Relatable. <laughs> when I was a student at Cambridge, I remember an anthropology professor holding up a picture of a bone with 28 incisions carved into it. This is often considered to be man's first attempt at a calendar, she explained. She paused as we dutifully wrote this down. My question to you is this. What man needs to mark 28 days? I would suggest to you that this is woman's first attempt at a calendar. It was a moment that changed my life. In that second, I stopped to question almost everything I have been taught about the past. How often had I overlooked women's contributions? Sandy Toxvig. I love Sandy Toxvig. <laughs> have any of you seen QI? Sandy was a participant in QI for a long time until she took over for Stephen Fry. I've loved the series that she's done since then. She's amazing. I'm reading the contraband list for my school and... Okay, bleach, matches, lighters, Ouija boards, tarot cards, and skateboards. <laughs> for my school, and tarot cards and Ouija boards are in the same list as skateboards. Sorry, skater witches. <laughs> are you sure you want your tubes tied? What if you change your mind? Or what if your future husband wants kids? <laughs> no, I'm sure. Your parents might be sad they can't have grandchildren. Hey. My bloodline ends with me. <laughs>
<laughs> I really like how that's phrased. <laughs> like, yeah, Doc, I understand the consequences. This is kind of the goal. <laughs> this 5,000-year-old prosthetic eye found near Zabol in Iran is the oldest in history. It was made from tar and animal fat and painted gold. The wearer was a six-foot-tall priestess. Oh, my goodness. Do not remove the golden eye from the unnaturally large holy woman skeleton. Please. <laughs> I don't know. It's been a while since we've had a The Mummy movie. Movie. I wouldn't I wouldn't mind seeing Brendan Fraser back in action. It does seem like he's living his best life right now. Have you seen a smile? Ah, my heart. <laughs> my dog wants a bite of my peanut butter and chocolate chip bagel. I know she cannot have this because chocolate makes dogs very sick. Madigan does not understand this. She pouts and wraps herself around my leg like a scarf, trying to convince me to give her just a tiny bit. When I do not give in, she eventually gives up and lays in the corner under the piano, drooping and sad. I hope the universe has my best interest in mind like I have my dogs. When I want something with my whole being and the universe withholds it from me, I hope the universe thinks to herself, silly girl. She thinks this is what she wants, but she does not understand how it will hurt. Me! Chewing on my bad decisions, TM bagel in the corner. <laughs> the universe, what's that in your mouth? Me! Chewing faster. I said, what the f*** is in your mouth? <laughs> you ever try to get one to drop stuff that's holding in his mouth? It's like that meme. <laughs> throw stick! Don't take, only throw. <laughs> my favorite spirits are the ones who get a bad reputation for luring men to their deaths when really they usually just take the form of beautiful women standing alone and men think that, in and of itself, is an invitation. So it's really on the men. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it's like, <sighs> you know the old movies with knights and stuff and they walk around in a forest all alone and they're like, oh, Look yonder, a beautiful woman standing alone in the middle of a bog. And then they go walking out in the bog and slowly their armor just drags them down lower, but they still they walk forward. I have a limited amount of pity for people who try to, you know, run their ships into the rocks just to get the attention of mermaids. <laughs> people always tell introverts to be more talkative and leave their comfort zones. Yet no one tells extroverts to shut up and make the zone more comfortable. No, no, no. He's got a point. No, no, no. He's got a point. <laughs> nah, you gotta call out your homies when they're being too loud. <laughs> if you got a new person joining the group and they're not as talkative as everyone else, make everyone else be a little shush when they're talking. That way they feel a little bit more accepted. Witchcraft is about intent, and the wording of a spell is often the product of the vernacular of the time. Therefore, using yeet in a banishing spell is perfectly acceptable. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Me, blessing my house to get rid of negative energy. Oh, that's not sage. <laughs> is that a is that a corn dog? <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a corn dog, but I recognize them from so many of these meme videos. <laughs> no, I've definitely never had a corn dog. Are they good? I'm I'm, 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 I'm skeptical. <laughs> not like other girls. She wears short skirts, I wear t-shirts. She's cheer captain and I'm a forest creature. <laughs> There's a social media account that only reverses gender roles and their posts are so on point and hilarious. Repliers play into it as well. Okay. Interviewing men is a minefield. I mean, where are you supposed to look? Crotch, biceps, face? I wonder if it's really worth it. <laughs> Lauren and CEO. <laughs> Lauren! Beatrix Potter developed her drawing skills on fungus and scientific drawings more generally. She discovered that lichen is a symbiosis of moss and algae. She only turned to children's books when she was rejected from the Royal Society for being female. Peter Rabbit creator Beatrix Potter, born on this day in 1866, was a skilled self-taught mycologist whose stunning drawings of mushrooms scientists use to this day to identify species. Dang. That is super interesting. Brain picker. I'm gonna, <laughs> I thought I said brain pickler. <laughs> I'm gonna follow you on Twitter. I wanna read more about this. Honestly, the mere fact that some people refer to daddy long legs as harvest men is creepier than 90% of the deliberately created horror. But like the worst part is that the alternative is calling them daddy long legs. <laughs> what are they harvesting? I am haunted and vexed. <laughs> They are harvesting our sorrows. Oh. <laughs> True harvest men and not cellar spiders, which are the other daddy long legs. Hang, hang on a second. N mm. Hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna hold myself back from showing you all pictures, but daddy long legs, harvest men, are not pretty. They're kind of, eh. But cellar spiders. They are gorgeous, and they are translucent, and they pose no risk to you, and they really just keep bugs away from you. 
All right, back to this. <laughs> they just, I've never heard someone call them the other daddy long legs, and I don't like that. <laughs> are truly omnivores, known to eat everything from spiders to fecal matter, ew, to leaves and fungus. But one of the singularly most interesting habits of a particular European species is their almost symbiotic relationship with beehives, particularly man-made beehives. When a bee dies inside the hives, workers will remove the corpse to just outside the hive before dark. And the harvestmen? Well, they live up to their name. So what you're seeing is they are the Grim Reaper for bees. <laughs> the Grim Beeper. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I liked the ending to that. I didn't like <laughs> Beeper. <laughs> I have a video from maybe two years ago where it's just about bees doing silly things. And I never, I don't think I ever published it. I've got it kicking around somewhere. If all of you would like to see me with my silly bees video, <laughs> let me know. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Dear women, if he hates cats, it's a red flag. Number one, cats have boundaries. Number two, cats require permission. Number three, cats like to be touched affectionately, but on their terms. Number four, cats know vibes. Number five, cats can never be fully domesticated. Number six, cats are witches. It is known. The best New Year's resolution I ever made was to start devouring all my nicest things and save no small pleasure for an unspecified future. Now I burn the good candles, wear the expensive perfume at home, scribble imperfectly in notebooks. You can't pin joy like a moth. I think that's a really good place to end today's video. That's such good advice. Oh, <laughs> I've had so much fun in this video today. Thank you all for checking it out and following along with me. I really appreciate how many of you have bugged me in the comments to come back to the subreddit. <laughs> it's quickly becoming one of my favorites. I think we've only covered it a handful of times before, but we're definitely going to come back to it in the future. <laughs> all right, my birdos and weirdos. I hope you're having a lovely and fantastic day. <laughs> all right, we'll see you in the next one. Or we take it one topic at a time. Roll that outro. Okay, did, did all of you know about the super secret outro? <laughs> okay, you ready? Super secret outro, boop. You ready? Here we go. <laughs> Low-key, if CEO Pope wants us to have kids so down bad, he finna yeet some of that on-fleek lit church money, then full flex, I'ma slay on God. Now that's bussin' bussin', no cap.